Hi, this is Martin from Optica, and today we're looking at a little app called Alfred. The video you're about to watch will help you fix some of the ways that you're using your computer wrong. When you're working in your day-to-day, -day, you might come across little annoyances or tasks that are like fake tasks that take a whole bunch of time but don't really accomplish anything. And maybe you thought to yourself, there's got to be a better way. I'm talking about when you copy files around your computer, when you're dragging and dropping to copy them or move them, the inefficiencies in using the mouse. I'm talking about entering text that you use all the time, names and dates that are right on the tip of the tongue but just out of reach, copying text from one document to another and then repeating ad nauseum. These seemingly small issues and fake tasks open up a window for you to become distracted and carries the risk of you getting out of your flow state. This is the hidden cost to doing fake work as part of your day. For the longest time, I would just accept these annoyances and think that's just life. That's just how computers work. So I wasn't even open to the fact that there could be a better way to do that. And I thought that these people that spend hours of their day trying to automate a little part of it were productivity nuts. And maybe they are. But today you can circumvent all of that research and development and thus snatch some of uh, my favorite workflows and techniques with the Alfred of Productivity Mac app. We will learn how to manage files quickly, run file actions like resizing images, view clipboard history, copying multiple lines of text at once, text expansion, and we'll take a look at some of my favorite workflows. Let's get rid of these little annoyances once and for all. All right, so when you first install Alfred, you can access the preferences up here from the icon. Click preferences. And I would recommend to just replace this Alfred hotkey with command space so that we bring up the Alfred instead of this spotlight so we can get rid of this inferior spotlight search that's built into OS X. So if we click here and click command space, you would see that it would turn into your new Alfred hotkey. So bringing up Alfred is command space now, and we can start searching like you would on the original OS X spotlight. Uh, the way I've got it configured is that when I start typing here, it'll search for only folders and apps. So if I do Adobe, it's going to find apps and folders in this view. If I want to search for files included in here, I would click space first and then Adobe. That would include my files here. You can also start browsing things. So if we go to the Adobe one here, command down file goes into the folder. And we can start browsing the folder here, which is uh, super handy, much faster than uh, searching why I find it, for example. So that's uh, the main way that you're going to be interacting with the Alfred interface. You can also do URLs here that would then open directly in Chrome. And that's how I mainly use this spotlight replacement. Another way that I access Alfred on a daily basis is by file options. So here we have an image selected in the finder. I can then do command option backslash to bring up the file options here. And here I can easily move this file to other folders via almost a command line uh, interface, which is so much faster than dragging and dropping or copying or what have you. There's also access for workflows in here, which I'm going to show in a second. But these here options are customized to my liking. If you go again to the Alfred preferences, you can bring up the Alfred preferences on the features, actions and file actions. And here you can customize what you would want to show there when you do file options. I mentioned the resize image, which is a workflow that uh, we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Bringing up the uh, file options, you can then resize this image to a target width. It doesn't do any extra compression or anything. It just destructively fixes that file. So maybe do a copy of the file before you do it. Uh, go to resize image and we say 488. And now that file is 488 pixels wide. Super handy to have there. One of my favorite features about Alfred is the keyboard history that is super robust and just works so well. 
the way I've mapped it is Control Option Command V. So that's the little claw there at the bottom of the keyboard. And as you can see, it brings me even previews of HTML colors. It does images that I've uh, copied in the past. Super handy. What I find myself using this for a lot is also like, I know uh, the name of the person, but I can't remember the last name. So I bring up John and I remember that it was John Donahoe. It's kind of a repository of things that I've copied in the past that I can bring up really quick. And uh, this is just a, a lifesaver on a day to day. And while we're on the subject of clipboard management, here's a scenario that I run into almost on a daily basis where I have to go out and copy multiple things to bring into one thing. So here we have three documents up with three names of colors. And the old way that I would do this is I would copy this first thing, then I would maybe be effective and paste that into the second thing here. And then I would go over here first to select the window, then I would select the text to be copied do a new line and copy that in and here's my list. That's the old way. The way I would do it now with Alfred's clipboard appending feature, I would go in and uh, copy the first one. Then I would select the second one and command CC and a little uh, sound comes up there. That means that I've appended this selection to this. I would do the same here with the last one, command CC. Every time I command CC, I add to this list. So if I'm to paste in here, I see that I have the complete list of copying the first one, then appending this one and appending this one to my selection. And this is just, this is just beautiful. And say you're operating with a lot of text and you've been copying for a while and you realize, damn, I should have been appending this so that I can just paste it in uh, at once. Uh, Normally, you would go into your clipboard history and then paste in each of these individually. But luckily, there's a script where you can paste in a certain amount of clipboard contents that you've copied in the past. So let's say we want to paste in the last five elements that we've uh, copied. There you go. That's your list of the last five things we've copied. One of the operations I do definitely on a daily basis is naming my files the current date. I use that sort of as a primitive versioning system, but also as another communication device to say to my stakeholders, hey, this is when I shipped this file, so here's a stake in the ground for me. I used to do the thing where I glance up in the corner and see, oh, it's November 8th today, so I would do Oh, it's 2020, yeah, and then November is 11, and then, uh, oh, it was the 8th, yeah, I would type that in, and then I would do file name after that. Kind of tedious. And that's where Alfred's uh, text expansion features come in, text replacement. So I've mapped this to D date. When I press E here, it's going to replace D date with uh, the current date in ESO format, just like, like I like it, the European way. So the way that you would add a snippet in here is to go to the plus icon here, call it a descriptive name. Now the descriptive name is going to show up in your snippet list here. So make it something that's uh, visually kind of what you're looking for. That's a good idea. And keyword here, that's uh, where you want to put in your replacement text. So in this uh, case, it would be D date. You see, it's already taken by my actual D date. And this is the snippet that you would paste in to get the ISO format current day date. As I mentioned, you can bring up your snippets list. Here's my viewer hotkey. You can set that to whatever fits your uh, individual workflow. And this is my mega list of snippets. Bringing up the snippet viewer with my hotkey. Uh, there's one of these that I would like to highlight, which is the daytime full which pastes in the entire date, time, and time zone. Uh, this I sometimes use as a design element when I'm presenting a design deliverable, for example. It's nice to have as a little eyebrow text up in the corner maybe uh, to show to my stakeholders this is the exact moment when it uh, was shipped. It's kind of a, an interesting little element. Other than that, I just have a shrug man and 
a Unicode arrow, but this is definitely a function that I'm going to be using more in the future. Which brings us to the last functions that I want to highlight in Alfred and probably also the most customizable ones. These are little scripts, little files that you download, you double click on them and they open in Alfred and they list you, let you customize Alfred in a numerous amount of ways. One of my favorites here is the Bluetooth connect one where I do command space to bring up the Alfred info interface and then BT to toggle uh, the connection to any Bluetooth devices from my Mac. So much faster than going up to the uh, Bluetooth control here and going off, oh, finding the right one in the list, clicking connect, hopefully it connects. This is so much faster. Emoji search is one that I just installed. Not sure how much I'm going to use this yet, but it is kind of handy to do E and then you're searching emojis and it does have some kind of a fussy search. So even though I do house, there's also door. So there must be some kind of dictionary there in the background working for me. Google Translate, I haven't used that much, but it is handy if I go translate to language and then I do casa. It knows that that's house and clicking enter brings it to clipboard. Pretty handy. Not sure how much I'm going to use that. Hide desktop toggle, kind of handy if you're screen recording or doing something where you want to hide your crazy uh, mess on your desktop. You do hide desktop to hide it, to toggle it. And that's a keyword that I've set myself here inside the preferences. You could also set that to a hotkey here to uh, do that system wide without bringing up the Alfred interface. Paste N keyboards. We saw that before. Super handy if you've copied a whole bunch of stuff that you want to paste in at once. And the resize image we saw here, that's a workflow that shows up in the file operations on command option backslash here at the bottom. To find more workflows, head on over to pacal.org or alphadapp.com slash workflows. I hope you see the benefit of never typing in the same text twice, never looking for a name or a date that you have just on the tip of your tongue, and having all that information that you've used in the past as little packets of information that you can reuse over and over again. Instead of using the mouse or the, your tablet to find that little menu item, use that keyboard stroke to get it done in 0.5 seconds. Really quickly, once you start utilizing these techniques and workflows, you'll feel little boosts of serotonin as you work through uh, the tasks that would previously take you a long time and now you just plow through them. To really make these techniques work for you, I recommend that you're hyper aware in your day to day of what little annoyances take a whole bunch of time. Then write those down and then later on when you have a minute, go in and research to see if there's a workflow or a better way of doing this that doesn't take as much time. That way you continuously sharpen the saw and you become faster and better at your stuff. And all of what you just saw today is really just scratching the surface of what Alfred can do, which is part of the magic because you can customize it to your individual workflow. Thanks for watching this video and until next time.